Namaste. Today's sutra is from the Bhagavad Gita, and it's pretty much self-explanatory, but still, it's worthwhile going through it. Now, Gita means a song, so the shlokas from the Gita should be sung like this. Bahunang Jangmana Mante Jnanavang Mang Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamirti Samahatma Sadurlabaha After many repeated births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me knowing me to be everything. Such a great soul is very rare. So this is how one attains self-realization through bhakti. It's actually very simple. When we're in illusion, we identify with so many things as I and mine. But especially, the root of it all is the concept of I, the individual. Uh, we think the body is the self, the mind is the self. Our thoughts, our sensations, our memories, our words, concepts, ideas, and so on. But what happens when we develop devotion is that we start to see that God, the Ishta Devata, the object of our devotion, is actually everything. In this case, Vasudeva, Vishnu, that God is everything. This works just as well for any form of God, goddess, or what have you. If we see that everything is the goddess, the world, the body, the mind, even consciousness, then there's no more place for this I to stand because everything has become him or her or Brahman, it. So, when we reach the pinnacle of bhakti, in bliss, we lose the ego and merge with the object of our devotion, the Ishta Devata. So, this is so direct and simple. Well, then you might ask, why don't more devotees, people who identify as bhaktas or devotees of a certain form of God, why don't they attain this? Well, for one thing, they are committed to a dualistic view. That there is the self with a small s, <laughs> the individual self, and then there's everything else. So this dichotomy between the self and the other, the world and even God being the other, that means there's never any resolution. There's never any merging. But you see, this is actually the stage of karma yoga. Dvaita Vada, Jagrat, consciousness, perceiving multitudinous different forms, each of which seems to have its own self-existence. But this is not bhakti. Bhakti, first of all, is spontaneous. It cannot be attained by rules and regulations. It cannot be attained by orders. Huh? You can't tell somebody, now you go and love God. 
I mean, you could tell them, but it ain't going to happen. Why is that? Because of what love is. Love is a profound appreciation of the good qualities of the beloved. And it arises spontaneously in the heart in response to these good qualities. It's not something that we can make happen. It's not something that we can do. What we can do is we can contemplate the object of our devotion and his or her or its qualities until this devotion arises, this bhakti, this love arises all on itself. Like Basho says, I sit here doing nothing, and the spring comes and the grass grows all by itself. See, this is the principle of association. If we associate with someone or something of very great and wonderful quality, then over time, devotion towards that object arises all by itself. We don't have to do it. <laughs> we can't do it. What we can do is, for example, recite a mantra. For instance, my mantra is a mantra for the goddess. Others have a mantra for Vishnu or for any form of God or even Aum, the uh, mantra for Brahman. If we recite these regularly, actually continuously, we are in association with the object of our devotion. And because of this, gradually the separate individual I gets crowded out. There's simply no place left for it to stand when one realizes Vasudeva Sarvamiti. Vasudeva, or God, is everything, is in everything, or everything is in him, or her, or it. <laughs> you see, the specific form of God that we accept isn't so important. It's a matter of taste. It's not that one is right and another one is wrong. It's a matter of which one fits our sensibilities and our taste. Which one inspires us with love by means of wonderful qualities. And this is an individual choice which no one can make for you. So you see, this is where the sectarian uh, religionists miss the boat. This is where they go wrong. They think, my God is the best God, and anybody who worships any other God is wrong. <laughs> so this creates a sectarian boundary between one faith and another. But wait a minute. If, as your scriptures say, everything is created by God, that means those other religions are also created by God. What do you have to say for that? Well, God created them just to lead unbelievers astray. <laughs> well, if you want to be so uncharitable as to think that, then I say, you're stuck in karma yoga. You're not in bhakti yoga, because bhakti is love. And if we love God and love all God's creations, then we have to say that people who are involved with other religions, people who love other forms of God, are also worshiping God, just reflected in a different image. See, basically, <laughs> God is formless. God has no name, no 
qualities, no activities. Uh, nirguna Brahman. And this Nirguna Brahman is reflected in the creation, which is called Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities. So any form is actually a form of God. Partial, yes, and imperfect, quite. But still, you have to admit that if God is responsible for the entire creation and knows and controls everything, then other forms of God are also God. Just like the moon can be reflected in innumerable puddles after a rain. And the beauty of the moon is preserved in those reflections. Even though the puddles are different, some are big, some are small, whatever, it doesn't matter. So in the same way, the light of Brahman is reflected in the creation, in all the forms of the creation, even stones. So if that is the case, if God is really everything, Vasudeva Sarvamiti, huh? then we should see God everywhere and in everything. And we should not say, well, that's not God because that would be going against our own philosophy. So those who follow uh, Bhagavad Gita and similar scriptures in a sectarian way are actually going against the spirit of those scriptures by uh, demonizing or vilifying other faiths, other forms of God, other forms of worship, and so on. If we really have developed love, bhakti, then we would love all of God and all of God's creations. And there would be no more room left for this, you know, pissy little I who always wants to be right, <laughs> who always wants to be the best and always win, huh? This little ego, I mean, it, it's become such a dirty word now. Ego, you know. I-go. <laughs> because where is the ego located? Can you show me? Can you point it out? Where is this so-called self with a small s? The individual. Huh? Where is it? I mean, you can point to the body, or you can point to the mind, or you can point to your possessions, your relations, your various labels and designations and so on, name and whatever. But that's not the self. That's not the ego. If we look for it, we find it's not there. And it never was there. And that is the ultimate in self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.